First question is from Abel J. Flores. It's often said that muscles have memory. Can the same be said about fat cells? If so, what does that process look like in terms of time if a person has lost a significant amount of fat from a healthy nutrition and exercise lifestyle? You can you can kind of say this. It's a great question. It right? is a cool question. My it, fat remembers a lot. If you, <laughs> well, I mean, so you can make the case for it because how you add fat cells. Yeah, so we should talk about that. So now, first off, muscle memory is interesting, right? You you build muscle, muscle fibers grow. You increase the amount of satellite cells uh, that are there. Muscle mm -hmm. then shrinks as you stop working out. Satellite cells don't go away. So the build back that muscle the second time around, much faster. And it's actually quite crazy. It took me such a long time to get my, my body mass up to 200 pounds working out as a kid. Now, if I stop working out, dip below 200 pounds, I work out, I'd be back, I'd be back up there within a couple months. Right, I mean, right. It took me a long, long, right. long time. Now, with fat, it's interesting, right? So you gain body fat. Typically, the fat cells grow. You lose fat. The fat cells shrink. The fat, the memory of the fat cells it hasn't been proven like it is with muscle. However, think of the behaviors that we tend to get addicted to or that we tend to get used to when we gain body fat. When you lose fat, you change those behaviors. And this is when people talk about set point, like weight set point. Yeah. When you lose weight, it's very hard to permanently change your behaviors. And so you tend to go back to your old behaviors and gain the fat. So in that case, I would say there's where the memory is. Now, it's not the same as muscle memory, but I'd say that's where the memory is, is where if you've eaten a particular way, lived a particular way that makes you weigh 180 pounds, let's say, and then you lose 40 pounds, uh, you know, within a, let's say you lose it within a few months, uh, it's hard to stay to that new lifestyle because you live for so long the way you did before. So that's probably what's causing you to gain the weight back again. Well, not only faster. that, every time we we gain the weight back, we also add fat cells and they don't disappear when you lose fat, they shrink. Yes. Right. So then the amount of total fat cells, and of course it's a lot more than 100, but pretend you have 100 you are you, and then you lean down, they shrink. That's what makes you lean down and look that way, right? But they're still there. Then you, let's say you fall off the wagon, you go back, you blow back up, you add 30 pounds. Now you add... 20 more fat cells. Now you go, okay, I'm back on the wagon. You, you drop down again. You still have 120. Now this mm. this really, it, now there's studies that show that this happens, but really it don't, so far- like you, When you extreme diet. Yes. Right? Yeah. It's when you go, when you diet down real hard and then you- in, you go way opposite direction. And Which it, don't I would make the case that majority of people do. Well, so especially people who compete in like bodybuilding or bikini, because yeah. they'll do this 12 or 14 or 16 well, week diet. Well, even the crash diet thing. Yes. yes. Yeah, so a lot of people that will lose 100 pounds uh, because they're really just like starving themselves. I yes. Mean, from these like uh, fad things. That yeah. Are so to use the example of the competitor, you, you go 16 week diet, you get super shredded for your show, your bikini competition. And then you're done with your competition and you gain back 20 or 30 pounds within a matter of weeks. By the way, I'm not making this up. I've seen this with my own eyes. People literally gain, women who hit the stage at 115 pounds gain 20 something pounds in a month or two. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that fast weight gain, what your body does is it adds fat cells. And the theory is that your body's trying to figure out a way to capture more of this energy, right? right. You dropped your calories, your metabolism probably yeah. crashed. Now you're eating like crazy. You're, you're doing all the cheap meals and your body's like, I need to figure out a way to be more efficient at capturing all this energy. It aggressively responds because it thinks it's in famine. Yeah. So you add fat cells to your body. Yeah. You do that enough times. And this is why competitors will find that it's harder to get sharp right. for each show. They'll be like, oh man, it was so easy for me to get super ripped and look really good. But now I've done five shows in the last you know year and each time it gets harder and harder. I don't know what's going on. You might be adding fat cells to your body. And like Adam said- they probably don't go away. So you add a bunch of fat cells, and now it's way harder right. to get lean uh, the second time around. And that's from that extreme you know, cycle. So if you're listening and you do the cut and the bulk, but it really it looks more like crash diet and then extreme bulk, you might be doing that to yourself. I think a majority mm -hmm. of people do. Yeah. I think it's, it's more common than it is the other way where somebody is really good about, oh, they lost the weight, and then they've slowly 
let weight come it comes back. back with a fury. Oh, it comes back with a fury because most people mm-hmm. crash diet. Most people go on some it's, radical new change. I'm going to try the carnivore diet this yes. month, or I'm going to try the vegan diet this month. They reduce calories significantly. They run it for a month, two months, maybe even three or longer, and then they go, fuck this. I'm yeah. going back to what I was doing before. And when they go back to doing it before, it's always way more at It first. takes way more discipline to totally. go slow. Yes. Yeah, yeah. That's, that, that is such a mental block that a lot of people just, well, I just want to go. Like, because when you have that motivation you want to go uh, and get to your destination as quick as possible and so a lot of people just make these compromises and they get to that place but they didn't do it in a healthy way that's gonna last i would make the case that there's uh less competitors this happens to than actual average people because at least some competitors are privy to this mm. not all of them know but i mean if you follow like elaine norton who has been touting this for a long time you're aware of this and it's become more popular to you know reverse quarter, diet reverse diet yeah. and that and that reverse dieting concept has come from the competing uh world mm-hmm. that's not in the average the average person does not talk about reverse dieting the average person does not lean all the way out and then go and get shredded and go oh i need to slowly reverse back no it's the it's and this is a psychological phenomenon right it's the all or nothing approach and it's it's like this we've all experienced this right i'm on a diet and the diet says i can't eat carbs let's just say i'm on a keto diet i can't eat carbs so i follow that for a while i lose weight because cutting my carbs has cut my calories and now i'm down 30 pounds and then i you know i i I go on a weekend or i go on a vacation and I say, you know what? I'm going to have a little bit of carbs. But now because I've had carbs, I'm off the diet. I'm off keto. And then it's like the floodgates are open. Yep. It's it's not like I'm going to have a little bit of carbs and then go back to where I was before. It's like I've already broken the rule. I've already stepped over the line. I might as well go nuts. So when I've trained people or, or you know who've done these types of diets – they almost never gain weight back slow. It's always this quick well, weight gain. There's another part to that. that I, This is what I have to talk to clients a lot is you got to be very careful because the day after and even the for a couple days after, the all these extra calories don't seem to make a, a bad effect on your body, right? They, Not at first, right? Yeah, at first you go, holy shit, yeah. I drank last night and I had Jack in the Box and I woke up and I look better today than I did yesterday. Yeah. That <laughs> happens. Huge. This happens, right? Because you're on a, you've been on a, and the, the, the science behind what's going on is your your glycogen levels are so depleted, so your muscle bellies are, are that flat look. Mm-hmm. So you've sucked out all the the, the, the carbohydrates in there because you're so low calorie. And the water. Yeah, and water and everything. And then all of a sudden, you sodium goes up, carbs go up, calories go up. It fills all the muscle bellies up first before it gets over over spilled into storing body fat it actually fills you out so then you actually look better for a day or two and that psychologically messes up a lot of clients because they go oh shit i, I can get away with this and then before you know it they're two three weeks deep into over consuming yeah, and even this oftentimes especially with drinking you'll drink and then the next day you'll wake up lighter yeah dehydrated, you're de- dehydrated. Yes. and by the way your body doesn't just produce body fat on your body instantaneously it takes like a week yeah so oftentimes the weight gain happens a few days later right but we look at the next day we weigh ourselves on the scale. Totally.